Greetings and welcome to the second episode of the PLP Pathways TV show. I'm Don Taylor and I teach at Main Street Middle School in Montpelier and we'd like to thank our community partner Orca Media for letting us film at their studio and the Middle Grades Collaborative and the Tarrant Institute for Innovative Education for their support of PLP Pathways. Hello, I'm Maura Kelly. I teach 7th and 8th grade humanities at People's Academy Middle Level in Morrisville, Vermont. In our last episode, we discussed the personal learning framework and the model we're going to be using this year called the Three Pillars of Personalized Learning. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about that personal learning framework, but we're also going to discuss the rollout of PLPs, long-term planning, and how to weave proficiencies into the personal learning experience. Before we get into today's show, we want to make sure you know how to stay connected with PLP Pathways. You can visit our site, follow us on Twitter, and keep tabs on the project through our blog. We'll show you these again at the end of the show. Every month, we'll be hosting a YouTube Live event for Vermont educators. This pre-recorded segment will lead to online discussion, collaboration, and planning among interested educators. Videos will be posted to the PLP Pathways YouTube channel. In our last episode, we talked about uh, guiding students through the uh, personal learning uh, plan, their PLPs, using a personal learning framework developed in conjunction with uh, Dr. James Nagel of St. Michael's College. Uh, just as a reminder, this personal learning framework has three phases. There's identity, growth and reflection, and the transformation stage. As school has just started, we're I think in our 10th day, uh, right now we're firmly in the identity stage. And in our classroom, that identity stage has meant uh, talking to kids about strengths and challenges. It's also uh, included looking at the transferable skills and translating those into kid-friendly language and then using the behaviors for success found in the transferable skills as our uh, team's constitution or our code of conduct. And so we've spent a lot of time looking at those transferable skills and then figuring out uh, how those can make our community a better learning environment and we're moving now into using those transferable skills for students to start setting goals where they can uh, identify their, uh, what they want to achieve and, and start working in that way. Uh, this year we've also started with the, um, the really big focus being on identity and developing um, really around the identity of the students using the personal learning framework. Um, and so one of the things that we've started off with is asking students to do some writing samples um, about themselves. So they've been writing short biographies about themselves, some reflective pieces, um, writing some poetry about themselves and their identity. And these really serve two purposes, um, is getting us to be able to get an insight into our students and their interests to help guide them um, and negotiate with them as they start developing goals, but also to assess students' proficiencies in both the transferable skills and in their content skill acquisition, um, specifically around writing. Um, and some of these pieces, many of these pieces, will end up on the student's PLP um, on their introduction page. I think that's a, a really great point. And when we talk about the three pillars of personal learning, we're talking about uh, the pr uh, personal learning plans, mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, proficiency-based learning and the flexible pathways. But what you just indicated and mentioned, I think, is that when kids are writing about their identity, about their interests, uh, you can task that so that it's meeting or mm -hmm. your proficiency standards. And I think what's really important is that you're engaging kids with the personalization and you're having them express that using standards-based uh, proficiency tasks mm -hmm. that allow you to develop really good insight into not only who they are as, as people and kids, but also the skills that they're mm -hmm. uh, going to need uh, support for. And so we'll be talking a lot about that this year, the integration of proficiencies into this personal learning and how you get kids engaged and doing meaningful work, but then also use the proficiencies to support that. Um, so again, the model that we're using this year that we'll be talking about, there's two of them. One is that personal learning framework, which is the phases of personal learning that the kids will be moving through. And the second one is the uh, pillars of personal learning, which are, again, the personal learning plans and personalization, the uh, proficiency-based learning, and then the flexible pathways. Uh, once, and I think it's also important to 
to note that uh, you're doing your identity in a certain way. You have activities that are best suited for your learning environment. We're doing it uh, maybe a little bit different way. But I think the goal is to really get to know your students and to mm -hmm. frame that in a way that kids understand and that you get to know them so that you can create that cohesive learning environment that's developmentally appropriate and will help support them uh, moving forward. And I also, go ahead. Don't you also agree though that as a teacher, really taking the time to know the individual helps you with everything that you do? Um, whether it's you know knowing a personal interest when you're working on a project within your classroom or you know helping them find outside learning opportunities outside of the school like really knowing how to connect your student to the things that they're passionate about and sometimes that doesn't come out unless you're taking the time to really build that yeah absolutely and uh, just as you mentioned that I'm thinking knowing the personal interest allows mm -hmm. you to get kids reading books that they mm -hmm. might be interested in or talking to teachers who share those uh, share those passions and I think it's really important uh, once you get to know kids through this personal learning, I really think it helps you build solid relationships and with the young adolescents we're working with, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things uh, that we need to talk about uh, tonight is the importance of educators uh, understanding their calendar and planning forward uh, so that they're ready for the benchmark events over the course of the a year mm -hmm. or trimester. So um, just really quickly, we look at our calendar and at the beginning of school we're working on our identity, uh, we're helping kids set um, goals, and the reason that we're doing this is that we want to uh, get to the first parent conferences and mm -hmm. we want to have a PLP that's in, in progress, we want to have goals on there and we, we want to begin collecting evidence. Uh, so one question I have for you, Maura, is mm -hmm. What's your plan look like moving forward? And in particular, how are you communicating to parents about the new proficiencies and also about personal learning and what does that look like? So one of the things I actually did this week on Tuesday, I was having sort of, you know, you're in the first two weeks of school and then all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, I need to look ahead. And so I took out my calendar and I started at that uh, parent-led, student-led parent conference uh, and I worked backwards from that date and tried to break down sort of my benchmarks for what students would need to do to have yeah. a successful um, conference. And our first big piece is that identity piece. And um, next week we're going to be rolling out the PLP and setting up our, yeah. our sites and um, having students personalize and start really exploring more around growth mindset and grit. Yeah. Um, and then we also have our open house next week, which is really a nice opportunity to start engaging uh, parents in the conversation about um, the changes that are happening at school, but also the PLP and proficiencies. And so I always try and have something available for my parents um, to try and get them to start thinking about it. And it's usually in the form of questions. Um, so they're having a dialogue with their students um, with some information that yeah. I provide as well. So that's a really good point. Uh, one of the things that we start to look at now is uh, parent conference or open house. We start to look at that as sort of the first key uh, event where we mm -hmm. can distribute information. And so we're going to really be thoughtful about the information that we're preparing for parents, both mm -hmm. about proficiencies and about uh, the personal learning plans because we want to over the course of the six weeks starting with open house mm -hmm. we want to be giving them regular updates so that when the kids come in and the parents come in for their conferences that we can all be on the same page with language and we've moved actually to a model where our conferences are based on the PLP yeah. and based That's on the goals and based on the evidence so uh, it's just being organized and I think working your way backwards so that when the parent does uh, show up mm -hmm. that everybody's on the same page. And just one thing I want to add, it's a little bit extra, but if you can use a Google form mm -hmm. to uh, create a survey and ask parents for feedback. And then what we did last year, we actually asked for feedback, we accumulated that data and then we sent it back to the parents and showed them what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. I believe that that really builds support for, for your program and answering those questions I think is helpful to parents. Mm -hmm. At Open House I always try and have an activity where parents and students are partnering on a task and I usually have it around uh, the PLP. It's something that they're going yeah. to do together um, whether it's a student walking them through it and then doing an activity together um, just as a way to engage and have parents really um, see sort of the students thinking around it. And sorry, you have, so you have that on parent, on? Oh. Yeah, on the open house. 
That's a really good idea. So you actually have the kids introduce their parents to the PLP at mm -hmm. open house. Or, yeah, in years past before the PLP, it would, you know, if we're rolling out iPads, it would be to do an activity on that. So whatever sort of is the thing that I'm anticipating parents to have a lot of questions around, I try and design in activities for students to partner with their parents. Right, that's that. a good idea. Um, I also just want to point out, for other good ideas, if you go to the PLP yeah. Pathways website, uh, there are a ton of resources for folks actually moving through the phases, identity, yeah. goal setting, growth and reflection. And if you Google PLP Pathways, you'll see a number of uh, information and social media pieces that are designed to help educators across the state. And again, there are uh, lesson plans and mm -hmm. resources right there available for you. And they're really grab and go. And they're yeah. great examples from around the state of what works. And so you know if you're going to one of those resources, it's something that you're going to be successful with. And if people have other resources yeah. that they want to send, send them <laughs> to us and we'll get them posted and we'll give you credit. And we'd love to have more grassroots uh, efforts by educators uh, telling us what works. Okay. So the next uh, YouTube live uh, webinar event is going to be Thursday, October 27th. Uh, we encourage people, you can join us. There'll be a live link that we'll send out that you can uh, do some chats or ask us some questions. And uh, we'll provide that information through PLP Pathways. And I just wanna, again, thank the Middle Grades Institute and the Tarrant Institute for Innovative Education and Orca Media for helping support this project.